Okay, hello everybody. I just, uh, I'm now kicking off a new project working on a Vox AC30 slash 4. Uh, this is the schematic I've set up for it, um, and then I will be kind of switching over to show you a layout version of this as well. Um, and specifically one of the cool things about this particular amp is that it has, uh, instead of the like six inputs that the AC30 slash 6, which was the more standard one later on, this is the very first AC30 well, I, I shouldn't say that. I know that there was another AC30 that was a very short-lived one that came out first, and then this is the second one, and I can't remember the detail on that first one. But this is the one that had the, uh, effectively, almost a clone of the AC15 that was very popular back in the in the 60s. And this area here is just quad EL84s instead of dual. But almost everything else in the schematic is identical. Um, so I'm, I'm going to build this because I've heard a lot of people really talk fondly of this EF86 preamp in the normal channel of that amp. So, uh, you know, so generally the typical kind of uh, high-low input jacks coming into an EF86 uh, with, uh, with the output going into the phase inverter and then off to the main power stage. That's all there really is in that stage. Uh, and then if you come down uh, a little lower, we have the vibrato tremolo, which is quite a complicated circuit. And the, the story goes that, uh, I think, is it Dick Denny that was the guy that did a lot of the work on these? I can't remember now, but he worked for Vox. He accidentally dropped a screwdriver into the amp and short-circuited something when he was trying to get his tremolo right, and it ended up sounding perfect. So he took a minute to go and look at where the amp, the, the screwdriver was laying, and he effectively rebuilt the circuit like that, and it came out perfect for him. So the vibrato tremolo input comes in here, uh, and then it has parts of it that go through these different stages as well of the other tubes. So it's all tube-driven uh, uh, oscillations. And then that comes down through a lot of complicated uh, other stacks of capacitors and resistor arrays here and here. This also is the foot switch input on off as well as uh, a tremolo speed. I'm sticking to the original design. Some people, will, instead of putting just three tremolo speeds based on resistance, will get a one meg uh, potentiometer and rotate through those. It's possible that uh, that may be a little better. I don't know. But I'm just going to try and stick to the original schematic as much as possible. Uh, by the way, I saved this from an old... I spent a lot of time rebuilding this schematic from an old one that was really ugly of the AC30-4 uh, that's on the net. It's really hard to read, uh, and I got it almost completely done. I had a few errors that were confusing to me. I went and talked to uh, Slucky on the forum amps, and or on the amp forum that I'm on uh, a lot, and he mentioned it looked exactly the same as his AC15, so I looked it up, and sure enough, everything was identical, very readable schematic, and the only real difference, as far as I can tell, are two things. The, the quad tubes instead of the dual tubes for the output of the EL84s, and as I recall, it's either this 2.2k uh, resistor for the cathode, or this 2.2k resistor for the cathode on the AC15 is like 1.5 instead of 2.2. So, my plan is to build it this way, uh, but that's about the only change really that's happening. So, um, other than that, it's not a massively complicated um, uh, amp from the normal channel. It's just this tremolo that I'm going to be rebuilding as well. It's going to be a lot of fun, but a lot of hard work just because there's so much complexity, and it uses three tubes alone for that that then bleeds into the phase, phase inverter up here as well in this in this section as right here. Of course, my hitting the wrong button. Okay, so um, ultimately, that's the kind of ski schematic. Uh, I, I have uh, a forum post already up that I will post in this video, but uh, the, that has that, so here is now the layout of the actual amp, and this was also Slucky that did this. You can see it's designed by Steve Lucky. He's a pretty dang uh, brilliant guy when it comes to amp stuff. And his layout, he, he did this for me really, which was really cool of him. His layout is identical also, except if you look here, this resistor and this resistor are part of the power tube input, um, grid input resistance, and then these two extra resistors here and here are for the uh, cathode for the, those as well. And effectively, uh, or, or, I'm sorry, this is the cathode, I think those are the the, um, the anode resistors. I don't remember off the top of my head now, I'd have to go back to the, to the schematic, but effectively those four are the only things different, but he took the time to go in and modify his schematic to do that, and then he took some time also to go and kind of uh, modify it in the second page, which shows the jumper guide and the drill guide. He does some pretty cool stuff, and he, I think he really enjoys doing this stuff. I do have some fun with it as well, but it also can become, for me, sometimes a bit tedious doing the layouts, but he does an outstanding job of it. So I'm pretty excited to have that uh, available for me instead of having to have done this layout myself. And uh, so this is how I'm going to build it. So what this build series, I'm going to actually go into a lot more detail than I've done on anyone because Vox is one of my favorite amps. 
Uh, I love the sound of the box. I built a, a Hoffman AC30 and loved it, but I wanted to see what the EF86 normal channel would sound like. And I wanted to take on an even more complex project this time with the tremolo. So um, as you'll see, this is a quite a complex board. I will show you the board and the components in a, in a subsequent video. But uh, this is going to be, for me, a pretty pretty detailed, long project. But I'm going to hopefully uh, document almost every part of what I'm doing for this in a lot more detail so people can really see what it takes to build a clone of a, an amp like this. And if you really, really want one and you can't afford to pay a lot of money for one, then you can do this yourself. On the other hand, if you have the money, uh, by all means, find somebody like me that likes building them, and maybe we can get that done for you. But anyway, uh, here it is, uh, the Vox AC30-4, and uh, we will keep details coming on this as the build continues. Thanks, guys. Keep your amp spice hot. Keep the jams coming.